So, I streamed solely on Kick for about three months. How was it? The app still requires a ton of time to flourish, but it has some good things going for it. For one, if you're gaming, it's a lot easier for people to discover your stream on Kick rather than Twitch, or so I thought. I was actually pretty excited about the supposed fact, because for a lot of small games, even if you're a beginner like myself, you'd most likely be shot to the top of that game's page, since you'd be one of the few people actually playing it. While this is true, the Kick community outside of gambling, IRL, and banned Twitch titans results in a pitiful few available viewers left. My naive self set everything up for my new Kick stream, which, by the way, was a lot more annoying to do so than on Twitch. OBS has all these available service presets, but weirdly enough, not one for kick. Turns out you have to use the custom option and put the server in manually, which the button for finding said server only denotes stream key. Not stream key and server. Upon pressing stream key, you are met with one, the key, and two, the stream URL. This is the server. You'd think they'd keep it all streamlined to coincide with OBS's wording, or at least keep the contents of that button consistent in the title. Confusion aside, I began my Rocket League stream, and all throughout the next few hours, I had, to my excitement, a constant two to ten people watching the entire time. Suspiciously, though, I attempted to interact with these people countless times throughout the the stream, but I was only met with dead silence. I have five viewers. Hello, everyone. No one's talking, though. Over the entire month, this continued to happen until it dawned on me. I think these are bots. Uh, there's a, I think there's actually bots watching my stream. They probably are. These were not people, but bots. Kick bot to inflate their view counts. I mean, actually, I don't know if they have to buy them or if they could just do that if they are a service that provides viewers? I don't really know. Anyway, nothing is confirmed here, and I've seen a few threads on Reddit about this same concern, stating they managed to get these viewers to, in fact, interact eventually, but I can't say I had the same results. Granted, I did have a few chatters across my time on this app, but you can definitely tell this was not a Twitch chat. One time, three dudes came in and immediately began sending some unhinged sexual comments, like this was a porn hub stream or something, and I'm not even a woman. Imagine how bad it is for them. It wasn't all terrible, though. A few genuine people had consistently visited my stream for a while. Actually, I just now while writing this script, discovered I am unable to remember who they were. At first, I attempted to visit my KitKat's history to figure it out, but that was understandably deleted. So I then visited my followers list. Well, I would have if it actually existed. Funnily enough, you aren't able to view your current followers. If they don't chat, all they are is an addition to your follower account now. Forever forgotten. That also reminded me of a few times people requested follow for follows. I indulged in one of them, but the next day my follower account had reverted back to what it was 24 hours ago, and I'd learned my lesson. Of course, that number, by the way, was 99% the follow for follow guy, but there's annoyingly no way to know for sure. Anyway, aside from the suspicious few counts to chatters ratio, my first kick stream did go well. Like always, I rewatched the VOD to catch any mistakes to patch up next time. Everything seemed fine though. Audio levels were balanced, my stream was good quality, I couldn't see any noticeable mishaps, so I went to bed. The next day, the same pattern played out with one anomaly occurring during that final step. My stream somehow changed itself to 720p. It's terrible to have to deal with 720p, especially if you want to grow your channel. And if you just want to get your VODs, that's even more annoying, because the VODs will beat shitty quality for the YouTube post, which is already going to compress it. Anyway, I double-checked my OBS settings, and everything was set to 1080p, weirdly enough. After a few days of dealing with this suboptimal quality, I decided to look into it. Turns out I wasn't alone. A few Reddit forums led me down the path to discover Kick had altered their restrictions to allow only verified users to stream in 1080p to aid their servers. Or it may just be a viewer-based threshold, which that's more likely. If a verification is required, well, good luck with that. Check out these insane requirements. According to BlackStrikerX on Reddit, that threshold is only two, which I can hardly believe since I, to this day, have never had a stream be in 1080p since that very first time. Apparently, it doesn't include your own IP, but I'm fairly certain I would have passed that average regardless. I ended up looking into and finding their announcement on Twitter from June 18th, exclaiming that the two view count theory is apparently true. Maybe I was doing something wrong, who knows. Just a side note, Kick doesn't have schedules, you can't really set schedules you can get on Twitch, so I had to make this instead, and so you can click that to see my link on Canva, and it's really a big annoying workaround. Anyway, something else that's a huge step down from Twitch is the lack of Kick supported docs on OBS, which is definitely one of those things I took for granted before the Switch. When you start up Twitch with OBS, you are immediately greeted with two docs. One, your chat, and two, your stream info. This one in particular is super helpful, because without Without even opening up the website, you're able to view your current title, your go live notification, category, and even tags. Speaking of tags, Kick still doesn't have support for hashtags. Coming soon, they say, yet five months later, soon still hasn't arrived. While we're on the dashboard, Twitch offers a few more quality of life changes than its competition, especially the quick actions tab, making it easier to raid channels, manage goals, or stream together, which is a new... Twitch feature, I think, but anyway, I don't even know what the hell it does. As well as doing a far better job at putting everything in one place on the side drop-down menu. Aside from all of that, Kick's 
management is awful. When a streamer was having a literal mental breakdown on their platform. When a streamer was trespassing on private property. When a public racist threw around slurs harassing many Japanese individuals. And when a streamer was sexually assaulting someone. It was all met with little to no action taken by Kick. Even if Kick fixed every single quality of life detail that I just listed, if that's the kind of environment Kick is protecting and promoting, then I don't want to be a part of this shithole of a service. Thanks for watching. I do have an actual Twitch account under Kazu Trash TV that I'm trying to grow at the moment. We just began this huge Cobblemon mod pack, which we've been meaning to get to for a while, and we just started it. So if you want to see that, head on over to my Twitch or any of my friends' Twitch on screen now. That's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace. This is Editing Kev here. I just want to say, I know this happens on probably every streaming platform, but I have seen way more news and way more of these occurrences happening on Kick than anywhere else. Anyway, for real this time, have a good day. See you on stream.